you do a fork comes with some useful shortcuts and tools that you can use to place things accurately but they may not be the easiest to discover so in this video we'll look at a bunch of them this video is sponsored by good old game devs like you who invest in learning with gd quest make sure you catch the offer on our new bundle the great good old four starter kit it includes our foundational courses learn 2d and 3d game dev from zero with good old four and our interactive cookbook of popular game mechanics, Node Essentials Godot 4 Edition. Okay, so by default, when you launch Godot in a 3D scene, you should be in the select mode, in the toolbar right above your viewport. And in select mode, you can click to select some things. Uh, you have to click on nothing to deselect, and you can click and drag to box select a bunch of things, right? Okay. Uh, then when you select something, you get the movement gizmo. And um, you can click on the handles, the axes, to move a character or a node along that axis. You can click on the squares to move in a plane. And um, that's about it, because if you try to click on something else, it's going to get selected, right? Uh, you can do more than that, actually. First of all, you can press W to activate the move mode, or you can click this icon in the toolbar. And when you click the move mode, you can click and drag to move the character from anywhere in the screen. And it's going to move along the view plane. So it's going to be constrained to how you are looking at the character, but you're not limited to that. So if I click again and move the character, then I can use the axes shortcuts to move along those axes. So X moves along the x-axis, z moves along the z-axis, and y moves along the y-axis, so up and down in Godot. Right, so you can use that. That's quite convenient. Then you can switch to the rotate mode with E, or click the tool in the toolbar, and click and drag there again to rotate uh, along the view axis this time, or around the view axis. Or, of course, you can click on the the uh, circles that you see in the viewport, right? Uh, when you're rotating uh, around this plane, you can press X to constrain the rotation around the X axis, Z to go around the Z axis, and Y to go around the Y axis, which is often very convenient because this is how you would turn uh, things like these trees, right? I'm gonna press E to go to rotation mode, click and drag and Y, and then I'm turning the tree around the y-axis. But you can do even more than that. So let's say that I want to tilt my tree a little bit, like that. And so I want to rotate the tree around not the y-axis, the world y-axis, but around its own y-axis, right? The What you are seeing here, what we call its local transform. I'll get to how you get the local transforms in a second, but let me go back to the rotate mode and I'm gonna click and I can press Y one time and it rotates around the Y axis and Y a second time and it will rotate along its Y axis instead, allowing me to turn the tree. Uh, okay, so that's great. Now, uh, I just showed you that when something is rotated, right, by default, you will get the gizmo to move along the world transform, but you might want to move the tree also up and down, like get it into the, the ground or outside of the ground, push it out along its own axis. To do that, you can click this icon here, use local space or press the T key to toggle it. And then you can move the tree based on its orientation. That's what this does. Uh, so this is very convenient also for characters. If I select Sophia uh, here and I turn her a bit, uh, when I press W to go to the move mode, if I click along the vertical axis, uh, it's based on her orientation. All right, a couple more. Um, you have the ability to toggle grid snapping with the Y uh, key uh, or by clicking the icon with the magnet in the toolbar. And when you do that, the character snaps their transform to grid steps. Uh, grid steps that you can change in the view drop down menu by going to settings and of course uh, there's an option there to show the grid um, but very often 
uh, when designing levels for games, we want to move things freely. And only sometimes, you know, you want to snap to a position or you might use snapping to, to get started and then, you know, fine tune the position like that. To do that, with the grid snapping turned off, you can just move the character as usual using the move mode. And then you can press control on your keyboard and keep the key down. And this will toggle snapping temporarily, right? So you can use that to snap position. But also if I press E to go to the rotate mode, I can click and drag and press control to constrain the rotation to 15 degree increments, which is quite useful. And there is one last mode that we didn't see yet, the scale mode that you can turn on with R. And if you click and drag in this mode, it will scale the character or the, the selection. And you can press control then to scale by 10% increments or 0 0.1 uh, increments. You can find all of these transforms uh, directly in the inspector on the right. So when you have a node selected, its properties show up in the inspector. And if you go down to node 3D, there's a transform category that you can unfold. And there you will find the position, rotation, and scale. And you can see that when I change the scale of my character, the property updates almost in real time. Here's one more tip for the road. If you're not sure if something is touching the floor, you can press the page down key on your keyboard and Godot will use the physics engine to snap the object down to the floor. So this means that the floor or whatever you're snapping onto needs to have a collision shape already. Uh, but the object that you're snapping to the floor doesn't need to, like this bush is just a 3D model. Uh, but because the floor has collision formation, we can snap it back down to the floor by pressing page down. If you're interested in getting this project, you'll find a link in the description. It's completely free and open source, uh, and it contains many demos of the Godot 4 features. Subscribe to get more videos like these, and be sure to join our Discord community. It's a great place to give and get help from fellow Godot users. You'll find a link in the description.